All right. When uh, Tess, I think we have all have Tess stories here. <laughs> uh, I met Tess at Davos, and uh, she had talked about passionately the work she was doing and said, you'd be perfect to come. I said, what can I provide? Uh, maybe I could speak in behalf of the company. But the more I thought about it, uh, our company, our foundation, and also on a personal level, uh, yes, two daughters, uh, Catherine and Terry Lynn, uh, one getting her PhD in the social sciences, uh, behavioral psychology and counseling, and then uh, Terry Lynn, 23, who's in communications and organizational um, change and behavior, thought maybe it is appropriate because um, I've been blessed to have a, uh, a lot of influence from, from strong women, women in science and also, not in science, but uh, grandmothers, mother, wife, and of course daughters. And so I think it's an interesting mix as these, these things are coming, not just to a head, but I think action. I think vision to action was a great title for the previous session, and hopefully we can think about investing in action in, in that vein. So with that, um, we'd like to maybe turn your attention to the slides. Uh, I am part of a company called Infosys, and uh, the company's based in India. It's interesting. We're in 43 countries, so we see a lot of what's going on uh, science-wise, uh, technology-wise. And I wanted to highlight a few things. First of all, uh, although I can't say it as eloquently as some of our other panelists have, uh, we're passionate about the advancement of women and girls in science. Women play a critical role to achieve global peace and prosperity. And I wanted to highlight that because we talk about education as if that's the answer. It's one leg of the stool. It's more than that. It's interesting, the research that I've seen and I continue to see is that the more that women are included with full participation across society, this is education, economic uh, opportunities and regulations, policy decisions, et cetera, the more likely the country is stable, financially stable, economically prosperous, and it resolves conflicts peacefully. So think about that. It isn't just an economic or, or a funding or an investment fund kind of decision. There's, there's a very much a foundational aspect to this as well. So we think that progress for women and girls in science depends upon these three things. Educational access from the very beginning uh, in primary school all the way through those formative years uh, and then beyond in college and, and after. Economic uh, opportunity through entrepreneurship and access to financing, access to the credit markets. And then finally, policy support. You know, there are over 100 countries where to some extent, women are either limited or prohibited from certain roles, certain occupations, and, and have, even owning businesses in some cases. So policy support to eliminate legal, regulatory, and cultural barriers is critical. And I think that's something that if you think about that three-legged stool, that's what we're seeing in the countries we operate. I'm going to the next slide. Uh, one of the things that we, uh, we believe in strongly is in this idea of role models. And so... Uh, our foundation has developed the Emphasis Science Prize, and every year we, we give out, uh, we, we award uh, in the, so, the social sciences, mathematics, uh, computer science, and engineering and mathematics. And wanted to highlight that 14 uh, of the winners uh, have been women. And it's interesting, if you can, go to the Emphasis Foundation site, emphasisfoundation.com. I think there's a dash in there. And what's interesting is there's a story behind each one. And I think that's what one of the previous panelists had mentioned. It isn't just about names. It's about that everyone has a story. And the more that you get to know the story, you understand, one, they had struggles. They had overcome something. They had vision. They had goals. And I think the more that you personalize and can start to relate, I think someone in the previous panel had a, uh, the see her movement. Uh, the same thing. The more that you can relate to it, I think it's important. Uh, and, and also, I think, for the men in the room, it's also important because you can start to see uh, and relate as well. Because I think it is, like you said, allies or, or collaborators. Uh, I think it's important that we all relate more effectively. That's one of the things that we've done since 2009 and we continue to invest in. Next page. Also, our foundation uh, helps girls learn science early, and then we continue that progress. If you look on the left, uh, there's, some, uh, there's some programs. There's one called Akashia Patra, that if you're not from, from India, you might not be aware of it, but we serve 1.5 million hot meals a day to keep kids in school. We take this kind of cause and effect approach because rather than just funding, which is important and it has merits on its own, we're trying to say, how does it do the most good? And so we found that, especially in some countries, one way to 
get and keep children in school is to promise a hot meal. And by doing so, uh, we add every year. In fact, we just had a kitchen that can serve 100,000 meals a day you know, uh, from one kitchen. And so we're trying to also pull in, in, into uh, play, put into play our supply chain and project management and logistics capabilities to get, if you think about that, you got to get these to schools while they're still warm. Point is, it keeps kids in school. And someone had mentioned earlier, even in some countries, that young girls have to stay home because it's the wrong time of the month, they don't have access. And so our foundation as well has served tens of thousands of, of young, young women and girls uh, with, during the menstrual cycles, literally giving them access so they can stay in school. And so again, we're trying to have this cause and effect where the impact, certainly there's money involved, but it's also deliberately invested and, um, and delivered. So that's something that's important. In the US, we're doing a lot, you can see in the middle, we found that uh, as important as coding is, and we do things with code.org, we do things with Girls Who Code, there's a lot of coding. We also believe that's a physical dimension to science. You make things. So during the Obama administration, we actually sponsor what's called Infosys Makers Awards. So we celebrate people who make things. Yes, coding's important, programming's important, we do a lot with that. It's also making something. So we have these experiential uh, workshops where people, whether they're director set like things or logos, I'm sorry, Legos, uh, and, and be able to make things. And of course, ultimately, they start to combine. Uh, there's a physical and computer dimension. So that's, it's really big for us. And then last but not least, we think that there's a continuing part as well. And we've done a lot with libraries. Uh, I mentioned there's 10,000 libraries we've established. We've actually referred over 60,000 of them. Uh, I think it was Andrew Carnegie, the, the big steel magnet, who, when he died, he decided not to give lots of money directly to people, but he created all these libraries. In fact, in many small towns across the United States, there's a Carnegie Library, because he thought he would provide the opportunity for anyone free to walk in and learn anything, but he wasn't going to just give them something. So it was kind of a show, show the, show the uh, intent or will. Our plans, uh, we plan to do really three things. Uh, we want to, let me take a step back here. It isn't, education really isn't just about the students. Sometimes we, we forget that we have to help or empower the teachers as well, because if we don't fund them, if we don't help them be prepared, uh, then how can they do an effective job? Uh, our Emphasis Foundation US our program is called Pathfinders, which we think is an appropriate name. We, uh, last year at the Indiana University, where I have an affiliation as well, we sponsored 800 educators from middle and high school. This wasn't college, it's middle and high school, to come in. We, we funded them, they flew in, and they spent time, and we taught them how to teach computer science more effectively. Think about it. We want all these children to learn computer science in the younger grades. Who's going to teach them? Do they have good equipment? Do they, are, are they the strongest programmers? Based upon what teachers are paid, based upon sometimes the difficult environments they have, they need all the help they can get to have those tools. We were very excited, in fact, um, for those that, that would like to, you can go on our, our foundation site, just the sheer uh, excitement from the teachers. It was a fourth grade teacher that she said, you know what, for the first time, I can now know, now know I can go out there and make an impact she can do a better job making an impact. So one of the things I think is important as well, just like investing, what's the force multiplier behind your hour of effort, your dollar of effort, your, your funding? And so I think it's the effort as well as can you make an impact. If you can help somebody help someone else or help someone help many people, then you really get the ball rolling. And also it shows a good role model because then those people say, yes, I see that and I'm going to do more of that as well. So second thing is once people are out of school, what can we do? One of the things we're trying to do also is train women in digital jobs. The jobs of the future uh, aren't the same jobs as the past. That's the bad news. The good news is that means there is more of a level playing field. So the people that learn these, it, it, in some respects, it is a level or it can be. And so we're trying to, to champion these roles. So we're offering more of these for people that are out of school. Uh, our employees as well as um, uh, pu public sector. And the third, uh, we are focusing, uh, I think diversity is a wonderful word, but, word, but it doesn't go far enough. I think inclusion is the active word because being diverse is great, 
but to include and be more active, I think that's, that's something we see as more empowering, it's more effective, and that's one of the things we're trying to do as well. Uh, you, someone else mentioned um, uh, measuring you know, data. The data isn't always flattering. You know, what we see in, in countries we serve, our own company, every year making progress. What's important is to look at information and say, what can we do? And it isn't just about hiring more women. In fact, our consulting division hires more than 50% women coming in. The issue is f tracing it through leadership because there are points in childbearing years for a variety of reasons where the ratios change. And, and let me assure you, it's not the companies like ours don't want to do something. I think sometimes we didn't look at the right data or, or maybe you're, you're fooling yourself sometimes as well by not seeing the bigger picture. Uh, the last several years, that's been a focus, and I think more and more companies are, are looking at that. So it's a leadership, people mentioned the leadership gap, so, so what can you do not to lose people along the way? And also we're thinking is we're rolling out more of these regional technology hubs in the U.S., and now we're doing it in Poland, we're doing it in Australia and around the world. How can we use these in a new way? What's the workplace of the future look like that's more flexible, that uh, helps people continuously learn, uh, helps women stay with us in the workforce, even during changes you know, across their life. So those are the things that we're working on, and we're trying to make as big of an impact as we can. But the main thing is, I think, just being humble and saying, what can we do today? What actions can we see? And hopefully, as a learning organization, plow that back and do better tomorrow. Thank you.